Hey, I'm Simon from FinSuite and in this video, we will talk about global classes in Client First. This topic is really important for your productivity in Webflow, so stay tuned. So what are global classes and why should you use global classes for your Webflow projects? Well, global classes are just classes that are being used on multiple instances in your build. So you don't create a new class every time that you need to style your elements. You just use um, specific classes over and over again inside of your build. And these classes often have a really specific functionality, like the container large class. If we have a look at the elements panel here, um, we are using the container large class here and it um, sets a max width of 80 rem to the element and centers it horizontally, which is the job of a container. So we don't have to um, set these properties manually all the time. We just have a div block and can set this class and it will um, have it set up for us immediately. So another benefit of using the global classes is that you can make changes for your whole build within seconds, really. So um, let's just keep um, experimenting with the container large class here, which is being used in nearly every section, as you can see here. So we also have it here and on the other section. And we can say, OK, I want to change the max width of the container large class to, let's say, 60 rems. And it will update immediately here. But not only here, since we're using the same class in multiple instances, it also updated here. So now we have a container large with 60 rem max width everywhere, which just updated our whole build within a second. So you should definitely be using global classes because it will your, make your life as a Webflow dev a lot easier. So what does the client first style system have to do with global classes? The answer to this question is pretty simple because whenever you clone one of the client first resources at finsuite.com slash client dash first, there will be a large variety of global classes already set up for you start building immediately. You won't have to create these classes anymore and can just focus on building with the global classes. So let me show you some of our global classes now, which can be pretty useful for your workflow. So for uh, example, we have the icon classes. These are global classes that set dimensions on icons and specific widths and heights. So here in this section, we have um, the icon 1x1 medium class applied to all of these icons. So what we can do um, is to change this for the whole build immediately if we want to. Um, so if we just say, okay, this icon size doesn't fit our needs exactly, we can do this within a second. But we can also just use different icon um, global classes, like for example, icon 1x1 small. So in this case, now we have here the icon 1x1 small class on the, and on the other ones, we have the icon 1x1 medium class. And the great thing is that we can again make changes here um, that will affect every single instance with this class also for breakpoints. So um, if we want the mobile landscape size to be 1.5 rem, um, here for the icon 1x1 medium, we can just update this for all instances using this class and then maybe just set the icon 1x1 small to 1 rem in width and height. Obviously, we have classes like container, global classes, uh, the global spacing system, page padding, the global text styles and more inclined first. But I won't talk about these classes in this video because I've already mentioned them in different episodes of this series. And in this video, I want to talk about classes that are also really, really useful to build your websites, but are just not mentioned yet. So I'll just demonstrate this for global um, responsive visibility classes like to show and uh, hide elements on different breakpoints on different devices like tablet and mobile devices. So I'm going to do this with this paragraph here. 
So for example, if you want to show your paragraph only starting from a specific point, then we can just add the class here, uh, show landscape, show mobile landscape, and it will then mean that it will be hidden until it comes to the mobile landscape breakpoint, and then it will show up. As you can see here, it's hidden. It's still there, but it's hidden. On tablet, it stays hidden. And then when we get to the mobile landscape breakpoint, it's visible again. As you can see here, the value here comes from the mobile landscape class. And we can do the same thing if we remove the class for a second here. And instead, add the hide uh, mobile landscape class. It will be visible on desktop and tablet, but then it will be hidden when it comes to the mobile landscape breakpoint. So these responsive visibility classes are um, great for you to use and can also save you some time. All right, so I've already already prepared another thing for you. So here on the section tutorial, I've prepared a prototype of a CTA section here. And as you can see, it's really too wide. It doesn't look good like this. And that's um, because I want to demonstrate you some the use of some of our global classes. So let's first just change the container large to container medium like that. It already looks better, but the paragraph is still too wide. So I'm going to use the global a max width and align center classes to align it to the center and also um, have a max width on the text. So what I'm going to do is hit the control and E shortcut, which equals command and E on Mac. And then I add a div block here. I'm going to drag the paragraph into the div block. And here I'm just going to apply some of our global classes. So I'm going to start with align center. It already shows up here. So I can just select it with the down arrow key and then enter align center. Um, but it uh, doesn't do much as of now. So now I will actually apply a class of max width, not max width large because it would be too wide, I guess, or we can see. Uh, no, actually this works great. Let's also try it out with max uh, small max with a small here. Okay, this is not enough. So I'll just hit the control and Z uh, shortcut to go back. Um, and yeah, so that's how we use the align center global classes in client first and also the max with classes. The max with classes can also be used, for example, if we scroll up to this section here, um, as you can see here, we have the max with medium class to um, wrap this paragraph here and it just sets a max width of 32. We could also say um, wisdom, which is a shorter shorter version of max width small and now it would look like this which is not enough width but just to demonstrate to you um, what we can do with the global max width classes of client first. As you can see, there are a lot of different global classes in the client first style system and there are great use cases for all of them. I want to show you a last global class we have, um, which is really a great functionality. And I'm going to demonstrate this um, here live in the build. So I'm just going to add a div block here. I use the control and E keyboard shortcut, which equals command and E on Mac um, to access the menu. And then I just added a div block here. And with the control and enter shortcut, command and enter on Mac, I'm opening the class selector here. I'm going to name the div block tutorial tutorial overlay and i'm just going to turn it into a into an overlay so i'm going to set the position to fixed because i want to have it on top of everything and to demonstrate it actually visually i'll just set a a grain effect here and i'll <laughs> no worries i'll turn down the opacity immediately but still to a point where you can see the grain in the tutorial. And I'm going to set a ridiculously high Z index, like a thousand. And now it's on top of everything, also the nav bar. But you might already notice it. I can't hover over anything. I can't hover over the button. I can't, um, I don't get the highlighted elements here if I hover over the elements in the designer. And we can fix this by adding one of our global classes, which is the clickable off class. This just disables the pointer events, the cursor events, um, 
for this div block. So now you can see that we can actually hover over the buttons again. We can also switch to the preview mode. Yeah, it's working. We can hover over everything. And also we get the highlighted elements here in the designer. And this functionality is made possible by the global styles embed, which is in every single client first build and also in the clonables. Um, so here you can see it's only one line of CSS, but it's just not a Webflow native option. So our global class of clickable off enables you to do the magic. The point of this video is not to show you every single class, but just to demonstrate that the client first style system and its global classes can really help you to speed up your building process. It for sure does. Thanks for watching the video up to this point. I hope that you will be able to implement this into your workflow. If you enjoyed the tutorial, then make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the FinSuite YouTube channel for more Webflow content and live streams. If you want to know uh, more about the client first style system, then make sure to check out finsuite.com slash client dash first, where you'll find the official documentation, but also free clonables like the template I just used in this video. See you soon and have a nice day.